Hey math enthusiast, I'm here to continue the notes on the basic trig functions sine, cosine, and tangent. So let's take a look at the next two terms that they define in this section. Angle of elevation and angle of depression. So before I run through the exact definitions, let's sketch out a little picture. So let's say for example I have someone down here who's looking up at the top of this cliff. Now, initially they were looking straight ahead while they were walking there. Then they stopped, tilted their head up a certain amount, a certain number of degrees, and then looked up at the top of this cliff. So what I've drawn right here, this angle is your angle of elevation. All right. The easy way to remember that, elevation going up in elevation, you're looking up at a point higher than you. Now, at the top of this cliff, there might be another person. Now, initially this person was looking out straight ahead, enjoying the sunset or the sunrise or something else. And this person all of a sudden spotted the person down below. So they tilted their head down at a specific angle. So this angle here is your angle of depression. All right, angle of depression because he was initially looking out straight ahead and then he tilted his head down to look down at the other person. Okay, so why do I need to know these terms? So in this section, we're getting to the part where we have to go over word problems. And in these word problems, they'll have to describe the situation using these two expressions, angle of elevation and angle of depression. Now, in a specific problem, if it involves both an angle of depression and an angle of elevation, what you might notice is that these two lines of sight that I drew at the top and bottom in my picture are actually parallel, which tells me that the two angles, the angle of elevation and the angle of depression, these two are actually alternate interior angles, which tells me that they both have the same exact measurement. So, depending on how the picture is drawn, you can fill in the measurement for the angle of elevation, let's say it's 32 degrees, is going to be the same measure for the angle of depression. Okay, so let's use this information and try to solve our first word problem. So, for this first example, we have an airplane door, it's 19 feet off the ground, and there's a ramp, has an angle of elevation of 31 degrees and I want to figure out what is the length of that ramp. So let's start off I'll sketch out let's say here's the door for my airplane it's obviously hovering up above the ground here's my airplane and then we have this ramp so I have this ramp leading up to the door Okay, so maybe these are like my full set of stairs. And they tell me that the airplane door is 19 feet off the ground. So if the ground is at the bottom down here, straight up from there to the door is 19 feet. Next, I notice they're using that term, angle of elevation. So remember, that's as if someone were looking straight ahead and then tilted their head up to look up at something. So let's imagine this person right here is this point in my triangle. So my angle of elevation going up to that airplane door is 31 degrees. Okay, next... I have to figure out what exactly am I solving for. So in this case, what they actually want is the length of the ramp. 
So the ramp in my picture is this side. And the last thing I'm going to label here, because I've drawn out a right triangle, I'm going to label the right angle. So now I have to figure out how do I solve for the side length given the information I know. So I'm looking for the hypotenuse in this right triangle. The one angle they give me is the 31, which makes this 19 feet the opposite side. So I'll jot down my list of functions real quick. So Katoa, sine, cosine, tangent. And in this case, since I'm looking for the hypotenuse and I'm using the opposite, it looks like the function I'm going to use is the sine function. So I'm dealing with the sine function, sine of 31 degrees, and the sine function is equal to the opposite, which in this case is 19, over the hypotenuse. Once again, we have the setup where my variable is in the denominator. So I'm going to use that shortcut to get x by itself, skip, through, skip over the algebra, and I'm going to end up with x equals 19 divided by sine of 31 degrees. So the next thing I'm going to do is change that sine of 31 degrees to a decimal, which is going to give me 0 0.5150. And then I can plug that in my calculator to solve for x, which gives me a, a final answer of 36 point nine. Now they didn't specify where to round in this case, but I'm just going to choose to round to the nearest tenth. That's usually going to be the case for any word problems in this section. And the last thing I'm going to include are my units. It was 19 feet off the ground, so my ramp is 19 feet long. The next example is actually a little bit easier. They're describing a sonar operator on a ship. He detects a submarine at a distance of 500 meters and an angle of depression of 40 degrees. Now this one's a little bit easier because they already have the picture drawn for me. So it's a right triangle. The distance from the boat to the submarine is that 500 meters and then they give me that angle of depression. So imagine the boat is heading straight in this direction, but that sonar detection can detect that submarine down below the water's surface at a 40 degree angle. Now in this case, what I'm trying to solve for is the depth of that submarine. So I'm going to put my variable on this right hand side because that tells me how far the submarine is directly below the water. So let's label the sides in our right triangle. Easiest one to pick out is that hypotenuse across from the right angle, the 500 meters. And across from the one angle I'm given is the opposite. And that's what I'm looking for. So I can jot down my list to figure out what function I'm going to use. So in this case, I have the hypotenuse and I'm looking for the opposite. Opposite and hypotenuse is once again the sine function. So I'll start off with sine of 40 degrees, so that's the one angle I'm using, equals opposite over hypotenuse at 500 meters. Now in this case to get x by itself I need to get rid of that 500 in the denominator. So I'm going to multiply the right hand side by 500 or 500 over 1. And that's going to cancel out those two. But I also need to multiply the left hand side by 500. So now I'm going to have 500 times sine of 40 degrees equals x. So first thing I'm going to do is actually change this sine of 40 degrees to a decimal 
to make it a little bit easier to multiply. So it's really going to be 500 times 0.6428, which gives me 321.4. And the units that we're using here were meters. Now let's take a look at this last word problem. So we're told that we are a block away from this skyscraper that is 780 feet tall. Your friend is between the skyscraper and yourself. Now the angle of elevation from your position to the top of the skyscraper is 42 degrees. So I can see that written here. And the angle of elevation from your friend's position to the top of the skyscraper is 71 degrees. I can see that written here. So I'm trying to figure out how far are you from your friend. So this is the distance that I'm looking for. Okay, so it looks like I have two different right triangles that are overlapping here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to redraw them and split them up. So I'm going to start with the one that I highlighted in red here. So my building is the right hand side, the height of the triangle. I have the 42 degrees down where I am since I'm looking up at the top of the building. And what I'm going to focus on finding is the base. So I'm going to label that as Y, let's say. And I know the height of my skyscraper is 780 feet. So I'm looking for one side in this right triangle. I have another side and I have an angle besides the right angle. So I'm going to be using one of my trig functions. All right, so let's label our sides. The hypotenuse, which doesn't have anything to do with this problem, but I'll label it anyway. 780 is the side opposite that angle that I'm going to use, that 42 degrees, and the side I want is the adjacent side. So what function uses both opposite and adjacent? That is the tangent function. So I'll jot that down, tangent of 42 degrees, and it's going to equal opposite first, which is 780 over y. So in this setup, I have my variable in the denominator. So I'm just going to use that shortcut to help me solve for y, and I'm going to switch those two, just so I can skip over that algebra. And I'm going to end up with 780 divided by tangent of 42 degrees. And let's change that to a decimal first. Tangent of 42 is going to be 0 0.9004, which means y is going to equal 866.3. The units I'm using are feet. Okay, so I figured out part of this problem. Now, let's focus on the second right triangle in my picture. So where my friend is located. So I'm going to sketch this one up here. Here's my right angle. Here's the building on the left, or sorry, building on the right, my height. And my friend is standing off to the left where that 71 degree angle of elevation is. So once again, let's start off and label our sides. Hypotenuse is that long side across the right angle, which I'm not using. The 780 is the opposite from that 71 degrees. And the side that I want, which we'll call uh, Z in this case, is the adjacent. Okay, so now I have to go to my list of functions and figure out which one I'm going to use because I have the opposite and I'm looking for the adjacent. Well, this is the same setup we had before. So once again, I'm going to be using the tangent function. 
So my equation is going to look very similar to the other equation. The only difference is my angle is going to change. Now it's 71 degrees. My opposite is still 780, and I'm still looking to solve for the adjacent. Once again, since it has such a similar setup, I'm going to solve it the same way. So I'm going to use that little shortcut, switch my tan 71 with my variable, which gives me z equals 780 divided by tangent of 71. So once again, let's change that to a decimal, which is going to equal 2.9042. And then lastly, z is going to equal 268.6. And the units I'm using are feet. So now that I have these two lengths, let's go back to our original picture. So let's clean all this up. So now I can fill in the two lengths that I have found. So z was the distance from my friend to the top of the building, which was 268.6. And then y was the distance from myself to the building, which was that 866.3. So what exactly was this problem asking for? What they wanted to know was how far I was from my friend. So they want to know this distance. So essentially you could think about it as segment addition postulate. So we have 268.6 on the right. The whole entire thing is 866.3. And I'm looking to solve for that left hand side. So in order to find that, I'm going to take the whole length, the distance from myself to the building, 866.3 minus 268.6 which gives me a final answer of 597.7 feet.